So this is going to be massively important. But I want to define two categories of scientific discovery. The first is what I just described, which is science where things that already exist in literature can be pieced together. And let's call that level one discovery. And these large language models will be awesome at level one because they've read every paper and they have a perfect memory. But I want to distinguish a second level of scientific discovery. And this is the one I'm interested in. I'll call this level two. And that is science that requires conceptualization to get to the next step, not just remixing what's already there. Conceptualization like when the young Albert Einstein imagined something that he had never seen before. He asked himself, what would it be like if I could catch up with a beam of light and ride it like a surfer riding a wave? And this is how he derived the special theory of relativity. This isn't something he looked up and found three facts that clicked together. He imagined, he asked new questions. He tried out a new model of the world, one in which time runs differently depending on how fast you're going. And then he worked backwards to see if that model could work. Or consider when Charles Darwin thought about the species that he saw around him and he imagined all the species that he didn't see but who might have existed. And he was able to put together a new mental model in which most species don't make it. And we only see those whose mutations cause survival advantages or reproductive advantages. These weren't facts that he just collected from some papers. He was trying out a new model of the world. Now, this kind of science isn't just for the big giant stuff. Most meaningful science is actually driven by this kind of imagination of new models. Just as one example, I recently did an episode about whether time runs in slow motion when you're in fear for your life. And so when I wondered about this question, I realized there were two hypotheses that might explain it. And I thought up an experiment to discriminate those two hypotheses. And then we built a wristband that flashes information at a particular speed and had people wear it, we dropped them from a 150 foot tall tower into a net below. A large language model presumably couldn't do that because it's just playing statistical word games. And unless someone had thought of that experiment and written it down, ChatGPT would never say, okay, here's a new framework and how we can design an experiment to put this to the test. So this is what I want to define as the most meaningful test for a human level of intelligence. When AI can do science in this way, generating new ideas and frameworks, not just clicking facts together, then we will have matched human intelligence.